If the American people were to pay attention to what's going on right now, this would stop immediately. I jumped out of the darkness, rose in through the light. Welcome back to the Mel K Show. There are a few people out there who have put all of their skills and talent to use, not only to help save our country, but to help save our children. And I'm honored to have Mike Smith with me today. How are you doing, my friend? I, I'm busy, but I'm good. I'm definitely, I'm good. I'm, I'm honored yeah. to be here, Mel. Thank you for, uh, it's always a pleasure to do your show. And I, my, my phone's going to keep going off all night but that's well yeah i mean you're a little busy and we have you back on the show for multiple reasons uh you and i've become friends i'm friends with your family and i have to say i have watched you non-stop work for the last uh two years uh in, in behind the scenes but a lot of people know you from out of shadows and uh and the amazing movie that really opened the eyes of so many people oddly enough out of shadows hit while we were locked down there was a lot of confusion and chaos and people found that film and found you know meaning and a reason to to get involved and to care could you talk a little bit about out of shadows and what led you to create that movie and then we'll get into what you're doing now absolutely um you know there was a lot of out of shadows was it was was really kind of a journey and i believe that it was a journey that god kind of put me on and i didn't really realize i was on a journey when i started yep. but as it progressed it was it was weird it was the way god was working with me in my life um by allowing me to have a perspective to see things behind the scenes behind the curtain that the public doesn't get to see because you know when you're when you're in real life or you're in a you know say you're in law enforcement or you're an attorney or you're a physician you see the world as a, an attorney would or a physician would or a, a, somebody in law enforcement you understand that world but when you're in media when you're in filmmaking when you're in narrative driven stories and you start seeing the way that the narratives begin to shape our culture it and and you you uh you can dismiss it you can say well those are just movies and that's what it is or you can like look at that and go why are we being told this message and i guess you you and i've talked about this on camera and off camera for the last couple of years but it never really occurred to me how much we were being manipulated until I was elevated to the level of writer because as a crew member, as a stunt performer, as a stunt coordinator, even second unit director, you might get a little creative control on how the stunt sequence plays or the fight sequence goes or the action sequence plays out. But it's, a, it's still part of a script. It's still, it's still what is scripted that you're doing. So, when you start writing what is scripted, that's when the gatekeepers kind of start showing up. That's when you 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 know certain things get greenlit that you think would be greenlit, or certain things get done or are not done that you would want to get done. And then you have to ask yourself, why are we making these types of films? Why are we? Why is it this way? And so I guess that was like. I think it was more out of creative frustration right. that I, that I, and, and, and I felt a calling from God, but it was more like, you know, I understand what they're doing and I don't really see anyone else standing up and explaining it. And right. I'd gotten to a point where I was like, you know, I've reached pretty much, I mean, I pretty much accomplished everything I wanted to do in Hollywood. I, I mean, I, I won World Sun Awards. I, I was, you know, in the Writers Guild. I was in the Directors Guild. I was a member of the Academy. I still, am, I'm, I still am. I just don't vote because I don't agree with any of it. Yeah, but, I hear you. <laughs> I, it's so funny. I read the stuff. I'm like, are you kidding me? I know. But okay, that's, I guess that's what they're wanting to do. 
So I just kind of, you know, look, I've been fortunate. God bless me. And I was able to be in a position to walk away. And I walked away and, um, you know, I gave up, I gave up a lot of money. I gave up my career, yep. but I gained something that money can't buy me. And I gained peace. I gained peace with God. And I gained peace with my heart. And I know that sounds cliche, but you know what? It really is true. And you know that I, about me. Like I, I do, I walk in peace and I, and I feel I don't feel the pressure I used to feel in Hollywood, even remotely. I feel like as long as I'm checking in with God each day, as long as I as I center myself and I say, what what would you have me do? And as long as I walk in that, I feel like I, you know, I'm always okay. And I always, you know, I'm like, and if I'm doing something that's not right, I always ask God, like, what would you have me do? Yeah. And I know that's a, I don't want to be like, I'm a Bible beater because you know me, I'll punch you in the face as fast as anyone. But I'm, but I, but I, you deserve I'm, it. No, no, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm all in for God. I'm all in for, I'm all in for this nation. I'm all in for what this country was founded on. And if, if men and women like me and you and the other people that have patriotically stepped up and answered the call don't do this, well, who's going to do it? No. You know? Yeah. And and the truth is that you and I do uh, get together outside of this realm and talk about this in real life. I say there's a lot of people out there that, they, you know, they're champions for this or that or for Trump or for the country or whatever when they're on screen. But when you sit down and you talk one on one in real life, what are they talking about? And that's one thing I can say about you is that uh, over getting to know you personally outside of the lights uh, you really are constantly talking about how can we make it better? How can we save this country? What can we do about trafficking? What can we do for the children? And it's really become a calling of yours that is is genuine and it's on your mind all the time. When Out of Shadows came out, you uh, tell your story of you. I mean, you almost died. First of all, you were a stunt man, so you weren't scared of anything, and you were also whoa, not whoa. just a stunt man. I was man. scared all the time. Let's let me let me let me back, hey. back you up on that. I always hear people say, you're not scared. And I say, well, any stunt guy that tells you he's not scared, he's either a dumbass or a liar because you do get scared. It's just how do you deal with that fear? How do you, you know? Yeah. Well, scared and do it anyway is even yeah. is even braver than being not scared. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, I, I, was mean, scared a, I was scared a lot more than I wasn't. It just was how did I deal with it? Right. And, and, and when that, they yell action, you didn't really have a choice. You, you got to do what you got to do. And you did it and you did it great to the top. I mean, you were at the very, very top of that business. And it's a very small because I spent 20 years in Hollywood. It's a very small club club that you were in and uh, very, very specialized. People came to you for a lot of things. You rose up to not just direct fight scenes and, and stunts and all of that, but direct films and direct second unit. And I mean, it really you're you're you were at the top of your game. You had an accident. You almost died uh, i know the story from both you and from wendy's perspective which sounds horrifying uh but you lived and i think that has informs a lot of what you do because uh you had to rebuild your body but you also had to rebuild everything so you can know I, just talk a little I, bit about can that I say, can i say yeah. something about that because this is important and, and like at that moment when i got paralyzed okay yeah i honestly believe that was god resetting my life i honestly believe that i was I needed a reset. I needed to start over. Like I needed, like I was such an, I mean, I'll be honest. I was a cocky, egotistical. I mean, I was all about Mike. It was like, b believe me, to get to the level I got to, you had to have an ego. And when you get crushed, like when I showed up, I always knew I was really good at what I did. I always knew I was really talented at whatever I was doing. Right. But when I got paralyzed, and I couldn't even walk to the bathroom and I couldn't even get out of bed. And I was in the most pain I could even imagine. I mean, for two years, I never knew. I never, I, I, I didn't understand like, well, who are you now? Like, what are you going to be now? You can't, you can't walk, you can't fight. You can't, you're not cool. You know, all the cool was out the window. There was no, I was not cool. I, my wife stood by me. I shrunk down to like 160 pounds and I was like a skeleton. Right. And I was, I was just trying to heal and survive and it was painful. But through that, 
that was when God was, I think, cleansing me and saying, hey, who are you going to be now? Who are you going to be today? With everything that you know, and I and and you know, I I struggled. I I'm not gonna lie. I thought about killing myself. I thought about end you know ending everything and just stopping it, the pain. But you know what? It, I it just it was like I don't know. I felt this thing in my heart that I had to go forward no matter what. Yeah. And and God was God was literally blessing me because all the failures that I ever thought I had in Hollywood. Honestly, those were God's blessings protecting me from what that was. And then when I realized really, I mean, look, there's a lot of great people in Hollywood. So it's really hard to say, oh, Hollywood's evil. Because you know and I know there are a lot of good people that work at a lot of jobs in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. That are, are, unfortunately, whether they know it or not, they're they're doing, they're, they're working on a, on a level where <clears throat> they're unaware of what they're doing, but there are people that are aware of it. And the people that are aware of it are the bad guys or the, or the people that I don't pr- t- prefer to align with. Right. And so when, when you realize that there really is kind of an in group or a club or gatekeepers, and that's really the, that's really where it comes into is like, okay, this is real what do you do about it? And most people won't do anything about it. Most people will just go, Oh, well, that's the way it is. I can't change it. I'm not going to do anything about that. And for me, I'm like, well, you know, what they have planned for us anyway, is not good. They, they have a total control domination and honestly depopulation. And I'm like, well, that's not good. So either I can go along with the flow of the crowd and end up there anyway or i can stand up beat the drum and say like you're doing like what you do with your show and i mean you have i watch your show it's amazing you do you do so many topics and you cover so many interesting guests thank you but you know you know that you're in the fight and that's and it's not it's not how much you're winning it's are you fighting yeah are you getting out like it's easy to be the sideliner and make comments and play troll or play shill or whatever but but get in the fight. Get in yeah. the fight at some level. Yeah, you know what's crazy about both of us? I had a, I was the same in <laughs> in Hollywood, uh, writer and all that stuff. And then I had an accident and I disformed like my face. This is all fake right here. I had to get my whole side of my face rebuilt. You're and in Hollywood, great. thank you, sir. And in Hollywood, you know, I woke up too thinking, oh my God, I can't go to the gym. I'm never going to the gym again. I, I never want to see anyone. I don't want anyone to see me like this. I was so based on ego and, and external. And I too went through the same exact thing kind of around the same time. And we've talked also about there was a dark period in in LA, in my experience, in the early 2000s, when what was covert became very in your face, overt, when it comes to the um, not just the satanic stuff and all of that, but also the sexualization of children, the pedophile, like the pedophile agenda was very clear. You and I both had experiences where we'd walk into like pitch meetings as writers and they'd be like, well, could you change this and make this, this? And you're thinking, why? Why would it? That doesn't make any sense. Why would who would want to see that? And, you know, and then we've watched it evolve to this point. And that is where, you know, I find us now. And when we talked about it a few years ago, we talked about the problem wasn't getting movies made. The problem was getting movies out. Distribution was, you know, you could go raise the money if you had an, a, a good enough script and knew enough people like you and I did, and you could get a movie in the can. The harsh part is when you realize you did make a movie and nobody's ever going to see it because the gatekeepers own the most important part, which is distribution. And you said to me three years ago, that's the problem. It's not and that I, movies I, aren't being made. It's that. And but, that's and that. that thank you. Because, Mel, I mean, see, that's what the public doesn't realize. Right. That's, and that's what actually a lot of the people that I still deal with in every day don't realize. I have people bringing me projects. Hey, Mike, let's do this. Let's do that. I'm like, guys, stop. I'm not doing anything else until we solve the distribution problem. Until, until we have a real answer. And so I spent the last three years, and you know what I've built. I know. And, and you haven't seen it all, but you know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I, I can promise you 
what we have is 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 a very 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 solid answer to this to return the narrative back to the artists right. back to the filmmakers back to the musicians back to the creatives god because right now all they have they, we have to they want to manage the creatives why do they want to manage the creatives because they want to manage the narrative if they can, can manage the narrative they can manage the population into shaping it into whatever direction they want to go right. and that is what like through building out what i've been building behind the scenes and now that that's it's done it just needs to be scaled now right um and it, it will be and, and we'll talk about that in the future and you're going to be a part of it yeah but but i mean big part of it and and what and what and what's so encouraging is i see the public is now starting to see oh wait a minute you know we don't have to like the, the world is changing the paradigm's shifting and hollywood is they're feeling it i mean whether they're formulating the numbers like oh we're doing this good or that bad i don't think so i don't think the numbers they're reporting on some of this stuff no way. Is even, or or they're using their big accounts and buying up the ticket sales and just funneling the money into something else to make it look like this movie made x amount of money or not sound of freedom you know look i love the fact it's being so successful and it here's the real question that everyone should be asking it's not about whether you like Tim Ballard or whether you like OUR or whether you like Jim Caviezel, here's the real question. The real question is, why is Hollywood not supporting this film? This is a really good movie. It's extremely well done. And the right. acting is phenomenal. And phenomenal. the story is very captivating, moving, and intriguing. So if I'm in Hollywood, right. I'm watching this movie. Why aren't, why aren't people celebrating this movie? as a vic Who doesn't want to stop human trafficking? You know who doesn't want to stop I know trafficking. who doesn't want to stop it, but your right. audience, ask yourself, why don't they want focus on focus on that? Don't focus on the noise. Don't focus on all the stuff you're hearing. Focus on why is why is it this movie being nominated? Why is it this movie winning awards at film festivals? Why yeah. aren't actors going, wow, what a great performance, Jim? You know, regardless if you if you support these organizations or not, I know the message is going out and people are realizing, hey, this human trafficking thing, this is real. Hey, this this human slavery thing, this is real. And that's and that's what out of shadows, I think, three years ago kind of prepped people to go, yes. is this real? And then, you know, here comes here comes Sound of Freedom, and people go, Oh my God, maybe. Maybe, maybe that, I mean, the people that watch out of shadows that clicked right away, get it. But a lot of people watch it and it's, it's hard for them to put their head around. I don't know if people got it right away like we did, but I know that a hundred million people saw it and they couldn't <laughs> unsee it. I don't know if people, when they were watching it immediately were like, but since it came out, I am telling you that people no longer see the narrative as as blind people taking it in and letting it manipulate them. I think you did a big service for people because I always say you can't propaganda doesn't work if you know you're being propagandized. And I think what you really did with that movie was kind of make people look at what they're watching, look at what they're consuming, be it in, in news or in, in media or in movies and really take a step back and be like, were they trying to manipulate me? Like there's a movie out right now called Oppenheimer. And uh, and I told people it's very interesting that the movie about the guy who created the atom bomb is, and uh, nuclear weapons is coming out right when they're pushing us into a nuclear. These psychopaths want us, want us to accept nuclear war. And two weeks before they went into production, as much as I think Chris Nolan is a genius and all these people are talented, the Biden regime pardoned the guy, Hoppenheimer, who's been dead for 50 years. So I'm thinking like, again. Yeah, I mean, look talent there's a lot of talent in hollywood it's oh, yeah. where is it being used right that, that's what it comes down to it's like and how story, like look at look at look at if we had stories like like what jim did and what the what sound of freedom did you know those are narrative driven movies right look what he did look at passion of the christ yeah. that was the most successful independently produced film in the history of film right if they were about making money 
Right. We'd already had Passion of the Christ two, three, four. I mean, look, we got Fast and the Furious ten. I mean, do you think anybody you're gonna tell me, oh, that's a great script? Oh, those no, are no, good no. actors. Oh, that's really good. No, it's cool dudes uh, driving cool cars, hanging out with cool chicks, and it's fun. Okay, that's that that's harmless to their agenda. It, does, it actually, you know, it it just it's entertainment. It's money. It's it's generational money. Distraction. You know? It's distraction. Completely. But if we were actually making films that were re-educating our, our children through, I mean, like, look at like stories like Rudy and Hoosiers and like, right. like older movies. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I know I'm old, but, same age. but, <laughs> but, but, the, but those kind of films, they weren't, they weren't over preachy. They just had a good message. They had a good, they had, a, they had a story in it that, that people want to hear. And that people uh, connect to. And so I don't really know anybody that could, I mean, like kids, 13 to 31 year old males love act, full blown action movies. That's what they like. But that's not everybody. They've done such a good job of dividing us into our little cells. Right. And that's how they message us. Like, you know, I mean, my wife, you know her, she <laughs> watches, drives me crazy. She, all she watches is home, uh, uh, the, oh yeah, she's a big homemaker though. Oh yeah, so a lot. All of I get is I'm watching cooking shows or I'm watching building shows. Except she loves Chip and Joanna Gaines. Except I'm like, you didn't marry fucking Chip. I can't like I can't build anything. Like we're not. Sorry, God, I, I just said the f word. You can okay. you, you can bleep that out. But I'm not <laughs> Chip. Like I can't build anything. Like I don't want to build anything. Like I don't. That's not my thing. Like I'm into other stuff. But yeah. she wants us to do. So anyway, I watch what she watches and I'm like, okay, well, that's entertainment, it's distraction, whatever. But is it really, you know, I don't know. It just to me, it's like I find it very hard to find anything on TV anymore that's yeah. really fulfilling me and nourishing my my walk or my my intellect. I just don't feel it. Yeah, like when we were younger, or you're talking about the movies we all we watch now are movies from the 70s and 80s. I mean, like and and early 90s. Uh, it's really like not Breakfast but this is, Club, like Breakfast Club, movies right, like, like all those movies, or like yeah. Terms of Endearment, or like some of these movies that came out when we were younger. I mean, there's so many I, I can name, and it's that's why I got it. That's why I went to NYU was to learn how to write films that made people stand up at the end and be, not be able to speak, but certainly change them. And we do have a lot of work to do because I believe that the entire industry was kind of hijacked and God, at the end of the day, my feeling is, and I said this to you many times and I've said it to many people, I, God gives talent and talent will find a way. People were very upset. You know, there's a big strike going on. You and I are in two unions, this is the unions involved. And uh, there's a big strike going on in Hollywood. And one of the underlying things that people don't understand the strike being about is that the big agencies and the big uh, producers who it's against, they want to use AI, AI wait till banks. You see, wait till you see Into the Light. I address this 100% in, in this film. Because I've been talking to people that have been in the industry forever. But what basically they're saying, okay, this is just for the audience, is yeah. that they would like to make banks, uh, AI banks for actors. All, first of all, there will be no more extras. That will all be AI. And those people will work a half a day. A lot of them live and have insurance by doing that. They will work a half a day, put all their likeness, sound, everything, speech into a file, and they're done. That's it. Now, for main yeah. actors, they want to have them give the same thing, basically. So they would like to go in and be able to edit, change scenes, change dialogue. Cha basically, a lot of people, you wouldn't even have to show up. If you're George Clooney, you can just say, yeah, you can use my, my AI bank. And they want to do that across the board. These people want to take out my humanity completely. And the gift from they're God, the talent. The art go ahead. From the art. They're going to remove the artist from the art. And if they do that, it's it look at the Harrison Ford. Look at this last Indiana Jones movie. Look at it. Look at what they did with that. This is this is the end. Like this is the end of filmmaking. This is the end of like if they know what you like because of your psychographics, and we're gonna talk about that in the film. If they know what you 
what you like, what you dislike, what you visually respond to, what you don't, you, they're going to be able to make movies that you're going to see a different lead character than your friend's going to see. You're going to so crazy. You, you're going to see. Oh, it's this is real. And here's the thing: this moment in history is watershed. Because unless we we have time, we're it's not too late, but we're on the I edge agree. of too late. It's right. and that's what I want to encourage the audience. I'm like, hey, I don't want to scare you to death, but yes. what you're gonna learn in out into the light is going, I'm going to touch on things that are going to educate you on how you were manipulated, why you were manipulated, and who is doing it. Because until you understand the tactics and techniques that these operations use to manipulate you because basically you've been psyoped you've been you've had a psychological operation run upon you your entire life and that means through your media it's not one thing it's through yeah. your media it's through your commercials the ad agencies it's through social media it's through your music it's literally through every interaction that you have digitally Hey, Patriot Pals, so happy that you're looking into gold and silver and protecting your savings uh, for whatever comes ahead. Beverly Hills Precious Metals is our good friend and we've been working with them for a long time. So you'll be getting a call from them. We'll also follow up here at the Mel K Show because we want to make sure that you're taken care of and you're protected. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, right now is the time. There's so much information coming. There's so much chaos. We just want all the Patriots out there to be sure that they are protected, they are moving forward, and that we get through the storm together and safe. Whatever may come, just know, we the people of the United States will prevail, God wins, and protect yourself, and uh, please get in touch with us if you have any questions. So uh, Beverly Hills Precious Metals, they're the best, they'll be in touch, we'll be in touch, you be in touch with us, let's do this together. That information, that data that you input or you you choose to believe or follow or go into creates your reality. And when that happens, the only way for you to even consider someone else's reality is to have it shown to you. And then it may take a while. It may take, well, look at how long it takes some people to wake up because we're all in a different place and our perception. We're all in a different knowledge base based on ex life's experiences. Yeah. And people like me, I mean, I have been so blessed because I have traveled all over the world. I've lived in China, Bulgaria. I mean, I've lived in tons of different countries and worked with different film crews all over the world. Yep. And every and, and I have a different perspective from an executive perspective to a crew level expect uh, you know um, perspective right. because yeah sure. And that, in watching that, that's just human experience. And when you have that ability to see how people see things, it gives you an ability to speak to them. So, you know, some people can't speak to the janitor. Some people can't speak to the CEO. But when you can speak to everybody, right. if you can reach them, what do you what do you what do you try to tell them? You try to you try to explain to them in a manner that they can see that they're being deceived. Because Listen, along these lines, what you're talking about right now, I've done shows on this, and uh, there's a couple movies that I think along the way told us where we were headed, including Minority Report and Ready Player One, and so, with both Spielberg, not surprisingly to me, uh, and <laughs> and there's a bunch of other ones. Like there was um, the, the, uh, the one with uh, Ryan Reynolds, where it's like straight up transhumanism. I can't remember what that was called. And then there was one with Johnny Depp that was transhumanism. I mean, what these- was Limitless? What, what movie was that? Was that uh, Limitless too? Uh, that was Cooper. But these guys, you know, th they've made these movies telling us that these are happening. If you juxtapose this to Noah Harari at the at the World Economic Forum or to uh or to Kurzweil, you know, with the with the singularity, you think like, wait, did he sit down with the, even AI? Go back to AI. Kirk, you know, Kubrick was supposed to make it, Spielberg made it. It is terrifying to watch these movies now and think, oh my God, they had this technology then. These guys aren't some geniuses that came up with it. They've had it for 20 years. And if they've had it for 20 years, people better realize that your movie that's coming out is going to show them something that's already been done. But like you said, we still have time. 
But if they were showing that out of Hollywood, it wasn't an accident. People think predictive programming isn't real. And I tell you right now, oh, it's real. And, and listen, they're not, these aren't brilliant creative people coming up with technology that doesn't exist. Your you would be surprised that? at how dumb these people really are. Honestly, you would be surprised at the highest level. I mean, like, there's some creative people, but there's some dumb people in charge. And they think they, they are the minority and they are trying to convince the world that they are the majority. And it's a very small group. The reality is, we, the people of this nation and this world, we are still powerful and we can I still agree. make a difference. And it, it, if, it, it just takes people to just, you know, here's the thing. And I say this all the time. <laughs> we are lazy as people. We crave comfort. Human beings want, that's why we have DoorDash. That's why we have Amazon delivery. That, that's what this is all about. It's basically trying to give you, they're selling you convenience removing your freedoms right. and then and then at the end of that they, you basically after you've lost all your all of your freedoms then you're in a you're in a place you don't even know how to plant a garden you don't know how to build a fire you don't know how to go fishing all your your everything just comes to you look we don't do anything unless we get uncomfortable you don't even roll over in bed unless you're uncomfortable like i lay on my back and i'm like Oh yeah. All right. I need to sit side, other side. Right, right. You know, like I, it's only when I get uncomfortable do I move. And I don't think this nation is quite. It's it's getting there. I think people yeah. are starting to feel it, and they they know something's wrong. People know something's wrong. It's just they haven't. They haven't. It hasn't registered to them. Oh, that oh oh my god moment where it's like oh, wow. Okay, wait a minute. And right. and it happens at a different time for everybody. You know, I mean, for me and you, it happened six years ago. It happened right. for some people 20 years ago. Right. And, it happened, and, and you know, the, the funniest thing I love to get is, I've known all this for 10 years. Welcome to my Oh, life. I get it all the time. Oh my, I know. oh, my God, please stop with that. Like, okay, I didn't get it. But now that I do get it, I'm doing what I can. And. But like I said, that's what Out of Shadows was. It was once you saw it, you couldn't unsee it. And it kept coming back, I think, to people again and again. You, it was such a well-done movie. And I know you're going to be streaming it upcoming on uh, on Twitter and elsewhere out of shadows. I'm going to re-release it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-release it on Twitter and right. hopefully on Truth. Like, I'm going to re-release it this week. Right. And then, you know, I don't, here's the problem. Like, every, like I'm, I know I have people going, why? Tell me more about your next movie. I'm like, no, I don't, that's not, like, I don't want to tell you more. I want you to go experience it because- like I'm like like to me, I, I hate when someone shows me a trailer and shows me the movie. Like I like I spent three years working on this, and I feel like it's a message that that, that you know God gave me. And the people that I that are in this movie, I don't think anybody's ever put all five of these people in the same thing together, and 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 are and are and are, and are, and are presenting this information to the public. So. I've I've been a little vague on it. Like I've dropped a couple teasers and I've been kind of quiet about it. But the reality is it, it, it's a movie that it's gonna it's gonna give you a baseline on on just information you don't have. It's gonna I'm gonna show you some stuff and then you'll come to your own conclusions. People right. people aren't stupid, they know what's going on, and it's just that they don't have the perspective. Yeah. Well, that's the, the you also happen to be a phenomenal storyteller. So, you know, not everyone has that gift. People don't understand. You know, when people say to me, oh, I could act or I could write a movie or I could do this. I say it's a craft. It takes decades to be great, to be Look, really I great. You, I told you this privately. I've yeah. sat behind geniuses and idiots for 25 years and learned what not to do and what to do. So right. now too, that I'm I not in that world and I don't have to play in that game, I can do it the way I want to do it. Yeah, and if then it, you if are, it, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, I'm okay with that. I did the best I could do. Right, but also, you know, um, out of shadows though is is the perfect thing to put out now because it is out of your brain. You did put together something, and I and people do want to see the continuation. But I want to I want to touch on for a minute your perspective because we both are close with General Flynn. We both know a lot of what's going on on the inside. We I know all the people in the movie. You know. Uh, we talk about this on our own outside of this world, but 
what what would you like uh, to come out of this? Because I always think about whenever I'm writing a, a film or doing a project, I always think like, what do I want the audience to walk away with? Uh, and without telling fully, I mean, this is this is you're going to see behind the curtain like you never have before in this project and really where we are, where we're going, what's happening, how it happened. And but also, I believe you have a goal of also freeing people and, and opening their minds. I think I think my I think what if I had one message to tell everyone, I don't care if you're on the right. I don't care if you're on the left. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care what religion you are. Every human being that watches social media, that looks at television, that listens to the radio or has been influenced by commercials since the time we've been alive. Us. Right. We've all been influenced to some degree. We've all been deceived into a belief system to some degree. And what I pray and what I what I feel like is so important about this movie is that it gives you a, a little bit of like, whoa, hold on. Okay, wait a minute. And it just, I, I, I just want people to come to it on their own. And I, do, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want I don't want to preach like I'm a Christian. I wish everybody was a Christian. I know they're not a Christian. I know not everybody's going to become a Christian. I'm not I'm not a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a priest. I'm not here to tell you what to go do. But I know this. There's good in this world and there's evil in this world. And the evils. Look at this human trafficking thing. Look at what's going on. Look, if you you don't believe this is real, you you better wake up because it is real. And anybody that has a problem with with somebody fighting against pedophilia or human trafficking, you're the problem, not yeah. not me and not the rest of the world. So just because I don't agree, like, look, man, if you want to go, you know, run around and do whatever you want to run around and do, as long as you aren't hurting a child and you're doing it in the privacy of your own world, do whatever you want. I don't care. But when you're coming and you hurt children or you start doing things to little kids that have no idea what's going on. I have a problem with that as a man. I have yeah. a problem with that as a father. And I just have a problem with that period. So, yeah. so I'm not going to stay silent. Like, okay. I'm not going to sit back and let that happen in my, in my, I mean, I, I mean, look, I'm, you know, what I'm 55 years old. I'm about to probably die here in a few years. Anyway, whatever. I don't care. Bottom line is, is like I'm not going out like that. I'm not going to sit uh-huh. back and do nothing because right. I I'm, I'm just not that guy. Yeah, and we have to both also really be honest here. Like the truth is, if most people that don't want to look at the pedophilia and the uh also the just the full sexualization of society, look at it now. It used to be like you know, one thing now, now people are giving up their jobs and their, their purpose in life to do only fans and to, you know, people are sending pictures of themselves to strangers, not realizing that's, that's going to be there forever. You you have to realize you're going to grow up someday and you're, you're going to regret this. This is going, and, and there's so much, and we, you and I both know there's not enough uh, healing and there's not enough um, you know, also, uh, programs out there, there's a million programs for recovering from, uh, drug addiction and alcoholism and all that. Not so many from, uh, child sex trafficking or being trafficked at all some, or any of that. America's future in, is working. I know. There's a, there's going some, there. Yeah, that's right. I knew you were going there. Yeah. So we're going to be having an event and I know you're going to be there Yeah. in Sarasota. I'm going to, I'm going to premiere, uh, into the light in Nashville on August 4th. And that's a private premiere. You're invited, of course. <laughs> and and we're, we're going to premiere that on August 4th. And we're going we're gonna to do that. And then 10 days later, we're going to have a, a second premiere the night before the America's Future Summit. And so people can, can watch the film, ask questions, or we can have a party or whatever we're going to do. But then the next day, people are always asking me, well, what do I do about this, Mike? What, how do I get involved? Well, America's Future is a great place to get started because they cover, you know, it's not, I mean, I've been, I, was, I was previously the way I got asked to be on the board of America's Future is I was asked to be on a uh, project they had called Project Defend and Protect Children. And that yeah. was me, Liz Crokin, Lara Logan, Lens Piper, and there's some legal 
people and some other people I can't name, and obviously General Flynn and Mary Flynn. Right. And Mary's, you know, kind of heads it up. So that that led to uh, working on that on that board or that that advisory committee led to me being asked to be on America's Future. But what I want to tell the public is we're we're working on programs in the school districts with 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 education with um with elections with okay. city councils get uh board the border there's all kinds of different programs you can plug into in your in your community and that's and that's the thing is like you don't know the brush fire that you could spark one of you i mean does it this right. is what this is what i'm trying to say we are we are here to spark brush fires of freedom in the minds of men yes. because there are people that are sitting back trying like i was just like without a shadows i never i probably never would have made out shadows if there was like if i wasn't encouraged by others bravery like when brad said to me you're going to do that film and i said brad you know what it means if we do this and he said i'm all in and dude, when Brad said, I'm all in, it made me say, I'm all in. And then we were all in. And, and Brad's courage inspired my courage. And then, you know, it was, it was, uh, it, it, it was educational. It made me look at it, look at the world a little different. It made me look at, and there were other, there were other people that inspired me along the way, but, but I just look at this and I say, you don't know when you stand up or like if there's a journalist or a big actor, I mean, look at, look at what's happening right now. I mean, there are a lot of people are standing up and speaking out after I sound know. of freedom, after all the shadows, this, right. the, it's, it's like a crescendo. Yeah. You know, I always say courage is contagious and, uh, and watching other people be courageous. It, it's lights a fire, like you said. And the other thing is a lot of people have been waiting, I think, for somebody to come be their hero, for somebody to, to, to make a difference. People have to realize they are that somebody. And once you yeah. realize that you are that somebody, I know a lot of America's future is also about local action. Once you go and you show up and you step up, I've had, I've had thousands of people email me and stuff. You go to that school board, you go to that city council you look at what contracts your local politicians are voting on you look at what they're doing it, it inspires you to get involved and once you get active you get other people active and we can start a movement locally by just reaching out they get by away going. with this crap they get away with this stuff because no one's checking them right no one's standing there going hold on because there's a quote and it's it's something like the indifference of good men in political affairs is to be ruled by evil men and that was plato and that that is where we we have been a, we've been asleep right we have been asleep on the watch and you know what i'm guilty of it i never voted i didn't care about politicians i didn't care about anything but mike smith and i got to tell you something i was wrong 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 on a lot of levels but you know what it took me becoming paralyzed it took me breaking who i was and rebuilding who I am, and now looking at okay, well, if I only have X number of years left on this planet, how do I do? What what? How do I? How will I be remembered? How will I serve? And I'd rather serve God than anything else because everything else I try to serve, I fail. It's true, but you do uh, serve God. You also have raised two amazing children, uh, girls that are strong and everything that we want. And a lot of this is about that, is about saving this, this country and freedom and, and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and our relationships with God and country and neighbors because our children deserve the lives that we had. And that is not what these people want for them, the small amount. We are the majority. There are way more good than bad, as you and I both know. But you know what? It's our future and our children's future and our grandchildren's future that you, uh, Mr. Smith, are making a big difference in uh, saving, in my opinion, because a lot of people do not know this. And I think this movie, Into the Light, is the second chapter of a of of two of the finest uh, films by an amazing human being. I am such a huge fan of you personally, but also as a filmmaker and everything you do. Uh, how can people see uh, Into the Light? What is the plan upcoming? And then there's so much more ahead, but we'll we'll save it for the next time. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and so I'm here. I just did a show right before yours. Uh, and I, they, I got asked that and I'm like, we're not 
this, unfortunately, without a shadows, I was in a position to put that out and do it for free because, I mean, I, I, you and I, you and I have talked about that a lot. And you're always like, you should have, and I said, no, that wasn't. I, I, I couldn't do it. But th- unfortunately, this time, I'm gonna. It's gonna be behind a paywall. It's gonna be on our own, on, on our own site, and um, I'm going to announce the link, uh, right. probably next week. The I just didn't want to put that out early because I watched how what they did to me with out of shadows. I mean, I was I kicked, off, kicked off of YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm back on Twitter, by the way. I but saw. I, I was. <laughs> I could. I don't know. I think Elon. I, I don't know who somebody. Oh, but you, I mean, you did lose three years for no reason. Had you you'd never been kicked off, we wouldn't be as bad as we are. Yeah, and then yeah. and then I got they took me off of PayPal. So oh, there yeah, was no way. Oh, yeah, I got kicked off. Yeah. So, uh, so if you guys don't think censorship is real and what they do, so I'm like, well, okay, well, I'm gonna, I, I want to make this other movie, but I don't know how to put it out because you know I don't, I, I, I'm not going through the studio system. I, I, I know. I, I I'm like Cortez. I burned my ships. I'm not going back. Like it's over. So well, you said to me three years ago, if you're <laughs> ever doing it again, you're going to do it your way. You're going to make sure there's distribution before you get started. And that's exactly what you're doing. Well, and you're I'm doing it for the relying, rest of us too. <laughs> I'm going to be relying on the people that were fans of Out of Shadows to watch this film. And what when, when you log on to, to our site, you just register and you'll be able to stream it. I'm only it's only going to be $4.99. Great. And you can stream it for 72 hours. So you can watch it a few times because really the first thing I hear every time someone sees this is I want to watch that again. I know. So, but the same, same thing with Out of Shadows. It's because you're such a phenomenal storyteller that people are God. so in it that me. they want that's, it so back. That oh, it's God. God. It's God through you. But the thing with your work is you ha- you do have to go back and watch it again, which is a testament to it being multi-layered and incredible. Uh, let me ask you right now for anyone that's watching, can they still go to Out of Shadows and put in their uh, email there to then yes. get it? it, it, it Out of Shadows will continue to be free. Um, okay. and, 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 and so so the way that it'll work is you'll be able to log on, uh, sign up, and, and and stream or rent the movie. And if you'd like to purchase it, I believe it's going to be something like $9.99. And right. then you can watch as many times as you want, you know, on your devices or whatever. But I mean, uh, and then we're also, because of you guys, you actually put this in my head. I'm going to do, because I don't know, I don't know if anybody still watches DVDs, but in the online store, we're going to have a DVD gift pack where you Good. can watch uh out of it'll be a double pack out of shadows and into the light for like i think 14.99 or something but well you'll get, you'll get both films on a dvd it's a good idea though because people can show it at events and get people involved in all of that it's a great idea to have the dvd option i think um and uh and it's a great idea that you uh you did not give up on uh on anything that you've been doing and i know god won't let you because every time i talk to you he's like yeah hey, god's asking me to do this but I have to tell you, I'm so grateful for you. I think you are uh, such a phenomenal human being. I know it's not been easy. Nothing's been easy for you. And uh, certainly after Out of Shadows, between then and now, you have been working nonstop. People were wondering where you were, what happened, what everything. I said, he's got his head down. He's figuring out that he's going to fix the system. And I believe well, you to are. to me, it was like, I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to do it. Because it, it, it's like a lot of people spend a lot of time talking about all this stuff. But right. unless you're actually getting out there, I mean, to me, like I was always the guy who did the stunts. I was always the guy who did the stuff. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to do it. And if I, if it's good, then okay. If it's not, then okay too. But at least I tried. You know, yeah, well, you didn't just try. You're going to be a big part of uh, of freeing the artists and giving God back uh, the glory of art and movies and film and, and music and all of that. And that is what we needed was the uh, distribution. You told me you were going to do it and you sure have. And it's only getting started. Thank you so much, Mike Smith. Into the Light is premiering very soon. Please, everyone, August go to the 4th, website. August 4th but- in Nashville. Uh, it's a uh, and it'll be on. We're going to go live that cool. night. We're going to go live on on online. On right. August fourth, so that it's gonna it will premiere online, oh, kind of wow. like Shadows did. So right. once the premiere is over, I'm gonna launch it live on the on the site. And I'll, on and the site. The, yeah. So everyone, get ready. August fourth, 
into the light on that site. You will be able to see it when everyone else does. Please share it everywhere. Buy it, download it, uh, do everything you can. These guys put their whole lives into it. Pay it uh, forward Alex. because there's going to be a pay it forward code. If you enjoy this right. message, you can purchase a code and pay it forward to a friend, a, a, a coworker, a colleague, or a family member. You can send it. If you want to send this message, I just encourage you to purchase a code and there'll be different amounts of codes you can purchase and sit and send it out to your friend via email or text and they'll be able to log on and watch the film. I mean, let's just let's just be clear. You thought of everything, but this was not an accident. You did a lot of thinking. <laughs> so, so you covered all the bases. There's a little bit of a plan behind this. Yeah, I know there is. Now, uh, just I, I want you because you are so inspiring to me personally. Uh, just let's leave the audience. People are feeling demoralized. They're watching the DOJ. They're watching all this stuff. What, what's your what's your message to the people out there watching this that, you know, are looking around and thinking, you know, we're in, what are we going to do? We're only going to kick their ass if you get off your ass. Ah, uh, love it. That's a Mike Smith. Put that in the book. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Intothelight.com. You will see the movie there. And please share, pay it forward, download it. Uh, these guys did so much for this country and for the world without a shadows. And they're just getting started into the light August 4th. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you there. Have a great night, Mel. Thanks, buddy. I jumped out of the darkness, rose in. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my original My Slippers are back in stock. You've made them a huge success, and now I've added smaller sizes, larger sizes, wide sizes, and all new colors. And with your promo code, you still save $90 a pair. Not only that, I'm having the biggest closeout sale ever on our sandals and slides for as low as $19.98. What makes my slippers different is my exclusive four layer design that you're not gonna find in any other slippers. My slippers patented layers make them ultra comfortable, extremely durable, and they help reduce stress on your feet. Wear them anytime, anywhere. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen now. Use your promo code to save $90 on my original my slippers, or for as low as $19.98, you can get our sandals or slides. Quantities won't last long, and with my 60-day money-back guarantee, you can rest assured they'll be the most comfortable footwear you'll ever own. I'm offering a novel approach that could reduce the complications and chances of getting infections. Well, certainly I admired uh, Dr. Zelenko's courage. He was always very honest. He was a hero as far as I'm concerned, and I always admired him, appreciated everything he said and did, taking a stand for truth. And uh, he was right, that's the bottom line. I liked uh, outpatient uh, family medicine, preventive medicine, and trying to keep people um, away from destructive patterns of behavior over time, and this way prevent them from ending up in the hospital. So that's where we give people hope and peace of mind, knowing that if you take the Zelenko Labs products on a daily basis, we're gonna back it up with the Z-Care promise to connect you with a telehealth visit for free with a licensed physician in all 50 states. You can take your own care into your own control, into your own hands. 